So I guess in 1981, you had an issue with some guy in your neighborhood and he ended up going to the Navy because of the issue? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that was the kid's brother that I ended up catching this case. But before I get into that, let me just say this, right? And, uh, and then we could go on if it's all right with you. Of course. Yeah. Um, I'm not trying to glorify anything I've done. That's number one. And number two, I don't want the family to feel that I'm glorifying or, or enjoying what I'm saying about, about the, my incidents with these people. But this is part of my life. This is part of my record. This is something that can't be changed. You know what I'm saying? So when I speak about that, I don't speak for it to be glorified or to excite it to anybody. You know what I'm saying? I, I speak about it in hope that somebody could take this interview and change their life and not fall in the same pattern that I went through. You know? Right. And you end up serving your time for yeah. the things that we talked about, which gives you the right to speak about it. Yeah. But, you know, somebody came to me, uh, somebody reached out to me. Um, the Cassiano family reached out to me and said they don't want me talking about that too much because they don't want me f saying like that he was a bad guy and all that. And they feel that, that I shouldn't be talking about that too much. But yeah. out of respect for that, I don't want to get all into the whole situation concerning that. Okay. Well, I mean, I've seen some of your other interviews, so I'll, I'll go ahead and speak about, you know, what's out there and what you've spoken about before. But essentially the guy that you got into it a couple of years before, his brother took on that beef. Right. Right? That's, that's a, correct. And a situation happened where he stepped on your, your sneakers. Right. He did that on purpose so I could have yeah. an issue with him. And that's where all that started from right there, you know? Right. And from the, the sneaker, stepping on the sneaker, I guess he stepped on the sneaker again. Right. So from the sneaker incident, you guys started to to tussle and he ended up shooting at you. Right. He told me, no, he told me to get out, out of the jam because that happened in the jam. So when he pulled out the gun on me, he told me, Let, let's go. So when he, as we walking out, he ended up slapping me in my face. You know what I'm saying? But he had a gun, so, you know, I didn't want to go into a whole thing with him. He had a gun. So as we were walking, some people was coming down the block to go to the jam. And as we walk, he kicked me in my ass with my butt, you know what I'm saying? But when he kicked me, that led it for me to run into the crowd, and he fired a couple shots at me. After that, I came back. You know, when I came back, that's when I shot him. I shot him with a 16-gauge shotgun. Right. You went and got a shotgun, and you came back. And from from what I understand in the reports, so you shot him at point-blank range? Yeah. Once in the chest and one in his face. Was that the first time you actually shot somebody before? No. No. That's not the okay. first time. So you're used to shooting at people leading up to this situation. Yeah, I've been, like I said, I've been in a couple of shootouts already. I had shot at people. I've been shot at, you know. I've been stabbed, you know. Well, but now you're sitting here with a shotgun and a dead body and witnesses around. And what is going through your mind at this point? I was trying to get away. <laughs> After I shot him, I was trying to get away. And I did get away. I was gone for a while. But his family and friends of his family started threatening my family and threatening of my friends. They was, you know, they thought it was involved in that. And that made me come back to New York. Cause I was on the run in Puerto Rico, Philadelphia, New Jersey. And that made me come back. That's how the inc the second incident happened, which happened in October. And that's when I got to the other shootout with the other kids and I shot them up too. Oh, okay. I didn't know about this part. So there's another shootout that occurred. Yeah. B before you actually got locked up for the first shootout. Right. The first shooting. Okay. And in that second shootout, people got hit? Yeah, four kids. Two related to the to to the victim. Two, two of them was cousins to the victim. Okay. You know, in the heat of the moment, 
your adrenaline is going, there is, you know, there is guns involved and there is the, you know, he kicks you and so forth. So there's a lot of anger and things happen at the heat of the moment. But at the point that you get away and you calm down and the adrenaline, you know, subsides, what's going through your mind that, you know, realizing that I just killed somebody, I might be facing life in prison or even the death penalty. I don't know if that was around during that time. No, the death penalty was not around. But um, I was already, like I said, I was already in the street. So I really, at that time, like I didn't have no fear of going to prison because I was already in junior homes and all that. When I, when that incident happened, I just came home from Gosha. I'm saying, I don't know if you're familiar with Gosha. That's a, a maximum security lockup. I just came home from there. So I wasn't home no more than like 90 days when I caught that case, you know? So I've always been, like, always been involved with situations like that because the neighborhood I lived in, you had to build that reputation that you didn't care either, you know? And I was young, so I was in, intrigued with all that violence and drugs and all that other stuff.